the nightly business report good evening tonight the asian development bank has approved a 200 million dollar loan to help sri lanka strengthen its financial sector building on last year's crisis management measures the embassy of switzerland the sri lankan government and the ilo held the handover ceremony for the safe labor migration program at cinnamon life colombo concluding a 14-year partnership on the third trading day of the week, the market shifted from its earlier decline, showing positive momentum. The S&P SL20 ended higher and the ASPI saw a net gain, indicating an overall boost in market performance. And the Nasdaq and S&P 500 closed higher, driven by a surge in technology stocks as investors anticipated Nvidia's earnings results. Walmart shares also gained after retailer raised its annual forecasts. From Studio 24, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Good evening and thank you for joining us. The Asian Development Bank has approved a $200 million policy-based loan to support Sri Lanka in strengthening its financial sector. This second sub-program of ADB's Financial Sector Stability and Reforms Program builds on crisis management measures from the first sub-program approved in the last year. The Asian Development Bank's $200 million policy-based loan for Sri Lanka's financial sector reforms will drive key changes under the second sub-program aimed at enhancing the Central Bank of Sri Lanka's regulatory supervision to ensure financial stability. This includes the implementation of an improved early warning system to detect weakening bank processes and the introduction of corrective actions along with the new stress testing model to monitor solvency and liquidity risks. The sub-program also focuses on strengthening the bank sector's asset quality by settling guidelines for credit concerns risk and incentivizing banks to extend guarantees to micro, small and medium-sized enterprises. The sub-program also focuses on strengthening the bank sector's asset quality by setting guidelines for credit concentration risk and incentivizing banks to extend guarantees to micro, small and medium-sized enterprises. Special loan packages will be introduced for MSMEs, particularly women-led businesses, to support their growth. Sri Lanka's new government must work towards regaining a B credit rating by 2027 to 2028 to facilitate affordable market borrowings for repaying its creditors, including the International Monetary Fund, according to World Bank Sri Lanka lead economist Gregory Smith. Speaking at a webinar hosted by the London-based Overseas Development Institute, Smith emphasized that achieving this rating is crucial as the IMF will transition from providing financial support to withdrawing funds in the coming years. He noted that with a B rating, Sri Lanka could secure more affordable borrowings to repay debt. Without it, the country would likely need another IMF program to manage its obligations. During discussions with the World Bank, the new government highlighted key priorities to boost the economy, including tourism, agro-business exports and the digital economy. The Embassy of Switzerland, Sri Lanka's government and the ILO hosted the Safe Harbour Migration Program handover ceremony at Cinnamon Life Colombo, marking the end of a 14-year partnership. Launched in 2010, the Safe Labour Migration Program concluded its 14-year initiative with its significant achievements in improving Sri Lanka's labour migration framework. Funded by the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation with an investment of CHF 16.65 million, the program was implemented through a collaboration between the International Labour Organization, Helvetar Swiss Intercooperation, the International Executive Service Corps and various civil society organizations. Key accomplishments of the SLMP include the approval of revised National Labour Migration Policy, an action plan for 2023-2027, enhancing migrant worker protection. Over 600 development officers of foreign employment were trained, while more than 250,000 migrant community members received vital safe migration information. The program also provided skills development and recognition to over 6,400 migrant workers and established 13 migration information centers offering essential services at the district level. K.M. Mahinda Sirawardhana reassumed duties as Secretary to the Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development today with senior officials including Deputy Secretaries and Heads of Departments present. He played a key role in securing the IMF's extended credit facility and successfully navigating Sri Lanka's debt restructuring. Sirawardhana has also served as the alternate Executive Director for Sri Lanka, India, Bangladesh and Bhutan at the IMF. He holds a Master's in Economics from Vanderbilt University 
Faculty and a BA in Economics from the University of Kalania and has extensive experience in macroeconomic management, public financial management and fiscal programming. Let's take a short break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. On the third trading day of the week, the market reversed its previous downward trend, gaining positive momentum. The S&P SO20 closed higher and the ASPI recorded a net increase, reflecting an overall improvement in market performance. To provide further insights, we connect with Manusha Kandanarachi from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. The Colombo Boost experienced a recovery from profit taking yesterday as the market faced a relatively volatile trading session with banks and blue chip firms recording mixed trading activity as the ASPI closed the day flat at 13,140. John Keels Holdings, Commercial Bank, Lanka IOC, Access Engineering, and Real Property emerged as the top positive contributors for the index. Additionally, stocks in the Food, beverage and soap tobacco sector such as Ceylon coal stores and Watavala plantations along with hotel sector counters continued to attract in investor interest throughout the trading day. Participation from both retail and high net worth investors saw a decline compared to previous sessions with turnover falling by 26.8% from the monthly average and accounted at LKR 2.7 billion where the capital goods sector led the turnover, accounting for 26%, followed by the banking and food beverage and tobacco sectors, joined which together contributed 30%, 34% of the overall turnover. Foreign investors remain net sellers, with a net foreign outflow of LKR 366 million. The top gainers for the day were Nature Lanka Finance, Ceylon Printers, Paragon Ceylon, Office Equipments VLC and the Nuara Elia Hotels Company. Meanwhile, the top losers for the day were SMB Finance, Blue Diamonds Non Voting, Blue Diamonds Voting, Muller and Phipps, Ceylon and Tess Agro. Yesterday, the secondary market yield curve saw a slight upward shift driven by marginal profit taking ahead of today's 145 billion rupee T bill auction. To offer further insights, we spoke with Tarusha Ashokar from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. So, in today's uh, Treasury bill auction, weighted average yields saw a continuous declining trend across the board for the second consecutive week. So the Central Bank of Sri Lanka offered a total of LKR 145 billion and fully subscribed to the total offered. Notably, total bids of each maturities also got fully subscribed while the six-month tables observed a greater reception with bids recording two times of the offer of nearly LKR 132 billion. If you look at the rates, the weighted average yield rates further dipped across the board. Accordingly, three-month table declined by 5 basis points to close at 9.30% and six-month table dropped by 4 basis points to 9.60% while the one-year table recorded the largest decline of 10 basis points to 9.78%. For the week ending 22nd November 2024, Central Bank of Sri Lanka has uh, LKR 154 billion worth maturities to settle bills while LK145 billion has been raised from pr primary auction during the week. So the bullish sentiment observed in the primary market was reflected in the secondary market as well where the secondary market yield curve dipped across the board. Also active trading was also observed from, uh, from short to mid tenors. Gold prices eased from a one-week high today as the U.S. dollar strengthened, though safe haven demand driven by ongoing Russia-Ukraine tensions helped to cap further losses. Spot gold was down 0.4% at $2,622.22 per ounce, following a peak earlier in the session that marked its highest level since last week. Meanwhile, U.S. gold futures dropped 0.2% to $2,625.30. The U.S. dollar, which had recently hit a one-week low, rebounded, 
making gold more expensive for overseas buyers and limiting its appeal in international markets. Oil prices held steady for a second consecutive day today as concerns over escalating hostilities in the Ukraine war, which could disrupt oil supply from Russia, and signs of increasing Chinese crude imports helped offset data showing rising U.S. crude stockpiles. Brent crude futures were down $0.05 cents at $73.26 per barrel, while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures remained flat at $69.39 per barrel. The ongoing war between major oil producer Russia and Ukraine continues to provide support to the market, keeping prices relatively stable this week. The Sri Lankan rupee has strengthened further against the US dollar today compared to yesterday, according to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. The buying rate of the US dollar has decreased, while the selling rate has also fallen. Now let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee is faring against other global currencies. Short break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back. Sri Lankan Airlines, the official airline partner of the Sri Lanka Design Festival, unveiled its latest collection from the award-winning upcycle brand Mataka at Cinnamon Life. Sri Lankan Airlines' Mataka brand, launched in 2021, continues to lead the way in sustainability by transforming retired materials from the airline's operations into stylish lifestyle products and collectibles. With a commitment to environmental responsibility, Mataka repurposes items such as aircraft seat covers, blankets, uniforms and wooden air cargo pallets, giving them a second life as innovative consumer goods. The latest collection showcased at the Sri Lanka Design Festival includes travel bags, tote bags, peg dolls, table runners and more. This new range marks an exciting milestone for Mataka as Sri Lankan airline partners with three Sri Lankan women-led sustainable businesses, House of Lonali by Lonali Rodrigo, SO4 by Ruth Virasinghe and Palms Island by Shamin Abidin. Beyond its environmental impact, Mataka also empowers economically disadvantaged women, offering them a chance to improve their livelihoods through involvement in the production of these unique products. BIMT Campus recently launched its Management Skills Development Program in partnership with the Chartered Management Institute of the UK. The program is designed to enhance the leadership and managerial skills of individuals, helping them excel in business, finance, industry and commerce. Participants will gain a broader understanding of their role in a developing economy, preparing them to make a significant impact in their respective fields. Established with the goal of providing high-quality education in management and technology, BIMT Campus collaborates with prominent international organizations to offer affordable, world-class learning opportunities. This new program further solidifies BIMT Campus as a leading provider of tertiary education in Sri Lanka. TJ Lanka PLC announced yesterday the expansion of its operations into the Arab Republic of Egypt, with a new entity incorporated yesterday. TJ Lanka PLC has announced plans to expand its operations in the Arab Republic of Egypt under a newly incorporated entity as of the 19th of November 2024. The expansion will focus on fabric manufacturing, manufacturing services and trading activities. For the first half of the financial year 2025, TJ Group, Sri Lanka's first multinational textile manufacturer, reported a profit after tax of 0.9 billion rupees. The group's revenue reached 32.7 Rupees, marking an 11% increase compared to the same period last year. 
Gross profit for the first half of the 2024 financial year stood at 3.2 billion rupees, reflecting a 47% improvement over the previous year. The company also boasts a strong balance sheet with a cash balance of 8.4 billion rupees and a net asset base of 30.4 billion rupees, equating to 42.19 rupees in net assets per share. Despite challenges such as the depreciation of the rupee and the supply chain disruptions, TJ attributes its revenue growth to increased demand across the group's operations. NDB leasing is now offering lower rental rates than the market average for both registered and unregistered vehicles. NDB leasing ensures that owning a vehicle is hassle-free and affordable with flexible tailored payment plans that extend up to seven years. There's financial freedom to manage payments with ease and there are no guarantors or down payments required, streamlining the process even further. And with NDB leasing's efficient process, you can drive away in your vehicle in as little as one day, whether upgrading to a new model or purchasing your first car. NDB Leasing promises a smooth, seamless journey from selection to getting behind the wheel. Prima Group Sri Lanka has partnered with Sri Lanka Cricket to sponsor the Under-15 Youth League 2024, aiming to identify emerging cricket talent. The partnership between Prima Group Sri Lanka and Sri Lanka Cricket was announced at a joint media conference at the Mercantile Cricket Association in Colombo. Since 2007, Prima Group has proudly sponsored the Prima Under-15 Sri Lanka Youth League, a platform that has helped thousands of young cricketers represent their districts and provinces. Many current and former national cricket team players have emerged from this tournament. The Prima Under-15 Sri Lanka Youth League 2024, a 50-over tournament, will be held across several venues in Colombo starting from tomorrow. Matches will take place at the Colombo University Ground, the MCA Ground, Thurston College and Royal College Grounds. Five provincial teams, Colombo North, Colombo South, Dambulla, Gaul and Kandy will compete with the semi-finals set for the 28th of November and the final on the 30th of November. Let's take a short commercial break. Global business updates coming on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Asian stocks traded within a narrow range today as technology shares showed caution ahead of key earnings reports from NVIDIA Co. Chinese markets struggled after Beijing left its benchmark lending rates unchanged, with the Shanghai Shenzhen CSI 300 and Shanghai Composite indexes dropping by 0.4% and 0.1% respectively. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index declined by 0.2%. In Japan, both the Nikkei 225 and Topix indexes saw losses falling 0.4% and 0.2% respectively. Meanwhile, South Korea's memory chip giant SK Hynix Incorporated gained 1.2% while its rival Samsung Electronics Co. Limited dropped 1.2%. The Nasdaq and S&P 500 ended higher, led by a jump in technology shares as investors eagerly awaited results this week from NVIDIA, while Walmart shares climbed after the retailer raised its annual forecasts. U.S. stocks finished mixed Tuesday, though technology stocks jumped as investors awaited results from NVIDIA this week. Also, shares of Walmart added 3 percent after the company raised its sales and profit forecast for the third consecutive time. That wasn't enough to boost the Dow, which finished down nearly three-tenths of one percent, while the S&P 500 advanced four-tenths and the tech-heavy Nasdaq gained one percent. Stocks began the session in the red after Russian President Vladimir Putin lowered the threshold for a nuclear strike in response to a broader range of conventional attacks earlier in the day. And Moscow said Ukraine had struck deep inside Russia with U.S.-made long-range missile. Other stocks on the move included Netflix, which gained about 3 percent after the streaming media company said 108 million people watched a boxing match between Jake Paul and Mike Tyson on its service. And shares of United Airlines increased more than 4 percent to a multi-year high after broker T.D. Cowan called the carrier its best idea for 2025 and raised its price target on the stock. 
Nestle plans to ramp up its advertising and marketing efforts, aiming to cut costs by at least $2.8 billion by 2027. Additionally, the company will separate its water and premium drinks businesses into a standalone global unit. These moves are part of its strategy to drive growth under the leadership of its new CEO. Nestle wants to cut costs by at least $2.8 billion by 2027. The company also said Tuesday it will boost advertising and marketing. It's part of a plan to drive growth under new CEO Laurent Frex. He took over in September from Mark Schneider, who had upset investors for several quarters with weak sales growth. Nestle, which owns brands like KitKat and Nescafe, gutted its marketing and advertising budget under Schneider. It also invested less in innovation during the cost-heavy COVID-19 pandemic. The repercussions continue to weigh on the Swiss company's revenue. It was hurt when shoppers switched to cheaper, better advertised or more innovative brands which ate into Nestle's market share. It forecast medium-term organic sales growth to be more than 4% in a normal operating environment. It also sees an underlying trading operation profit margin of 17%. Nestle said it will increase investment in advertising and marketing to almost a tenth of total sales by next year to support growth. The firm also aims to carve out its water and premium drinks businesses into a standalone global unit. Shares were down around 1.8% in early trade. And that's all from us here at the Nightly Business Report for today. We'll see you again tomorrow with the latest updates across the business globe. Until then, I'm Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Thank you very much for watching and have a good night.